Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today I'm going to show you Bad Moon Rising. <laughs> This was a request from Steph Morton, and thank you, Steph. Uh, it's a great song, uh, written by Creedence Clearwater Revival and released in 1979. And this will pass for a rock song, a pop song, or a country song, so it's a very useful one to have in your repertoire. Uh, everyone knows it, even if they don't know where they knew it from. Uh, it did appear in the film American Werewolf in London in 1981, along with a whole load more moon songs. And just occasionally you may get offered a gig which is all about the moon and <laughs> this is the kind of song that you've got to have. So I'm going to show you a lot of different approaches to uh, verse, chorus and solo. Um, and I don't suggest that you learn all of the bits but pick out the bits that you like best and, and use those. So first of all the intro and on the original there is just a four bar intro. Um, as a single line that would be... But if you know the chords, it's easy enough to work out a harmony and that you've got a descending line underneath it which goes So together, if we start off with a second over fourth there, then we've got one, two, three, four And if you find that a bit tricky doing the, a two over four, then you can do uh, a D on the top. Something like that. So that's your intro. Um, for the verse and chorus, I'm first going to give you the actual melody, which um, is not going to be very useful apart from orientating yourself, because if you're doing this with a singer, you don't really want to be doubling exactly what the singer is doing. But it is possible that you might end up doing this as an instrumental, in which case it's very useful. Um, so I will just give you the intro and the verse melody and the chorus melody to start with. <laughs> that particularly the, the chorus quite a lot by doing drones and or double stops and a few little fills and I'll just show you what that sounds like. <laughs> To the next verse uh, I'm going to show you the guitar riff which is quite a nice little line it goes um, it comes after the main vocal line so it's one two three four one two three four one Uh, and that comes four times and it's debatable whether this is actually worth doing that the main reason being that 
90% uh, of the people who hear this won't recognise that as being the guitar line because <laughs> it's quite subtle. It's quite subtly played on the original, and uh, when you hear it fairly distinctly played on a fiddle, it'll just seem like it's come out of nowhere. Uh, but I'm going to show you that anyway, so I'll give you that with the backing. Here we go. can use in the chorus <coughs> using the double stops um, uh, just those two I think so a G over a B and a F sharp over an A or oh, and a E over an A for the A chord so So this is quite a useful rhythm. Uh, it's all done down at the heel with a nice hard chopping action. I'll show you that with the backing. Then it's into the first solo and I will first of all show you the original solo um, which is another of these guitar parts which is fairly subtle and not obvious um, but it's a simple enough line so it goes The trickiest bit is the last line where we it's kind of all syncopated. One, two, three, four, one. So that's quite hard. Um, you could instead of that just do the melody as we did at the beginning. So as your solo, just doing the melody would be fine really. But I'm going to show you some other ideas for uh, the solo as well. Uh, moving on to the next verse, um, we're going to do uh, some little fills. So I suggested this at the beginning, but I'm, I'm going to show you some now. So if we do for each vocal line, do that, and then we've got a bar and a half to fill with either phrases from the major blues scale or the minor blues scale or the major pentatonic scale. So the, the D major pentatonic scale is. D major blues scale and uh, as an occasional spice you can use the D minor blues scale but that has to be used with care in this tune uh, so I'll give you four of those uh, filling lines using that So that's just a few examples of the kind of fills you might do. Um, they help to give it a bit of life, a bit of interest and a bit of a country feel when you do those. Uh, for the final chorus then you can do um, single lines. Uh, just picked out from the chords and making a kind of a flowing line from a B to an A to a G to an F sharp and uh, we'll take this through to the end which is just a, a two bar outro which I'll show you. So 
that's uh, an example of a uh, kind of a two bar fill at the end. Um, being able to make these fills up at the end is a very useful skill and you will be mightily respected by the rest of the band if you're able to do this on the spot. To spot how the thing can end and just to do it. Um, because quite often, if, if you're just rehearsing with a band, or worse still, as often happens with me, you're playing with a bunch of guys that you've never play, played with before. Uh, if, if they recognise that you can do these endings and kind of lead them to a, a proper end, then they will greatly respect you and they'll book you for the next gig and the next gig. Um, now this could be a four bar ending, so it could be... Um, <laughs> And if you're not sure how long it's supposed to be, then it would be a good idea to check in advance as to how long people think it might be. Um, but if you do it with enough strength and confidence, then everyone will follow you. Um, I'm going to show you now some ideas about an improvised solo. As I said earlier, the, the major blues scale is the most useful one to use, which uh, I'll just remind you is... And I'm going to give you two full solos of um, verse, chorus, uh, and you might well not get this, this length of solo, but you might. Um, and it's just simple phrases going up and down um, this scale, really. A few nice licks, um, but mostly not very inspired, but at least usable. Um, I'm going to throw in a little bit of the minor blue scale as well, and I'll just remind you I do have a video all about the major blue scale and the minor blue scale. Here we go. One, two, three, four. You could do something along those lines, you could even, if you wanted, and to my great amusement, copy that solo, uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't recommend it. Now finally, if you're playing this with a country band, then a few country licks would be very useful, and shuffles is, is the most useful thing you can do. Um, for the chorus, for example, you could do the Georgia Shuffle. <laughs> You could do that pretty well all the way through the tune if you wanted, although I think that would be too much. Um, that's the Georgia Shuffle. You could also do the Nashville Shuffle. Which is um, simpler to do, but I think a little bit more boring. So if, if, if possible, I would go with the Georgia Shuffle. And uh, lots of open string drones will also help to give it a country feel. Um, before I play you out, um, on my Patreon page I'm, I'm doing a video of call and response that you can use with Bad Moon Rising. So I'm going to play a whole load of blues phrases uh, which will fit over the sequence uh, that you listen to and you play back. And that will help your um, skills in playing the pentatonic scale and in making up blues phrases. So check out my Patreon page if you want to get that and lots of other exercises like that. I'll finish off by playing you out with um, uh, a bit of soloing over the main sequence. See you again soon.